Hey guys, it's Gus here um, with the second video in my, ref in my review series. Um, the first one naturally covered Warhammer 40,000 Rogue Trader. Uh, and today I'm going to be covering Warhammer 40,000 Second Edition. Warhammer 40,000 Second Edition. Now you'll notice with this rule book, um, this is the rule book that comes in the starter box. It's not as big and thick. However, what it will do is it will give you an idea of where the sort of transition was going with Warhammer 40,000. Now, bearing in mind, Rogue Trader was made in 87, I believe, if you watched my last video. Um, and this was made in, in, in uh, here we go, wait, 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 1993. Okay, so six years, okay. So they had six years to temper and adjust their ideas. And you'll, you'll see where I'm going with this. Now, as I said in the first video, I'll be going from Rogue, uh, Rogue Trader to 2nd edition to 3rd edition, and then from 3rd I'll jump to 6th. Okay, and there's a reason for that, and I'll cover that in the 3rd edition um, review video. But for now, let's go through let's go through this one. Like I said, it is a short rule book, okay, so it doesn't have the huge sort of background section that, that a lot of the others that others do, but you'll you'll see what they've done with the rules, okay, and you'll see what, what sort of cuts they've made and how they've how they've trimmed things down to make the game more Dumb down is the wrong word. That is the wrong word. It's more streamlined, but it's also geared towards mass battles as opposed to rogue trader, which is more like really a skirmish game, as you imagine it in the modern sense. So with Warhammer 40,000, let's get this thing cracked open, shall we? Okay. So for anybody who who remembers the 90s, and for anybody who doesn't remember the 90s, it was a very colourful time, and it was reflected in this book by many, many colours, such as that artwork. Look at that! Yes! This was this was truly the Taste the Rainbow era! Yes! Look at that. Brilliant, beautiful, colourful, just the way we like it. And the, the you know the amazing thing is people you know the, the, this is almost like this is this is almost like a picture from the nineties. This, this isn't this isn't the painting of figures. This is how people actually dress. These are real people. These are these are real human beings. City of Los, A Los Angeles, 1993. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. So you'll you'll notice with Rogue Trader, on the front it said you know it was pretty much credited to Rick Priestley. So on this one you'll see credited to Rick Priestley and Mr. Andy Chambers. Okay. Beautiful. So the main differences um, with this one is you'll notice the stat line. Um, has been trimmed down significantly. So, if you remember the last one, you had intelligence, you had cool, you also had um, the, the willpower. Um, so with this one, you've now got what we would know as more or less the um, the standard profile. Okay, with the exception of movement, they still have movement in the profile. So that is now the standard. As of second edition, that is the standard profile. Okay. So exclude movement, and it's exact same as the modern one. Okay, so this is where the profiles now become standardised, more or less. Okay, so you've got all your 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 standard your standardised um, stats. Um, you've got your squad coherency. Okay, your your standard you know two inches, what we're all we're all used to. Um, cavalry, um, the turn sequence. Again, this is where it's more recognisable in, in the modern sense. Okay, you've got movement, shooting, hand-to-hand -hand combat, psychic, and then rally, which more or less speaks for itself. So movement, you move your guys, shooting, you shoot, hand-to-hand -hand combat, you fight in hand-to-hand -hand combat, psychic, you use your psychic abilities, and rally. Here we go. During your rally phase, you can attempt to rally any of your squads whose morale has broken during the previous turns. See the rules on breaking and rallying for more details. So, more or less speaks for itself. Okay, so, now, you... All, all of the, all of the, all of the, the add-on extras that was in Rogue Trader, things like your mutations, all of the things that you would consider now, if you were a sixth edition current 40k player, as unusual. Okay, all the things that were in there that were, you know, out of place essentially in the modern sense, they've been trimmed in Warhammer 40,000, and this is the, this is the edition now. So with your Rogue Trader rulebook, you had like everything condensed into one rulebook. You had like your races, your mutations, your equipment, how to create your own guys. Everything was all in one book, and it was a lot in one book. Whereas with this, this is where they started to diverge off into having various 
like codexes, you know, like a race book, okay, um, you know, so th this is this is the edition where you had lots and lots of a breakdown of all the different stuff into different books, okay, and also this is the edition on which a lot of the modern stuff has now drawn upon. So when we get to sixth edition, I'll touch on this a bit more. And that they've all they've done is recycle rules. So a lot of things that you think in sixth edition from fifth edition, guys are like, wow, this is great. They include all these extra rules. They're not new. They've just recycled them from this and from Rogue Trader. There's nothing new. All they're doing is they're just recycling stuff now because the game has been around for long enough that they can do that. They can just recycle rules. And because people don't, uh, well, most people don't stick with with you know um, wargaming Warhammer long enough. Most people then realize that and they, they think, wow, this is great. This is new and but, you know, the people that have, if you bother to go through these rule books and, um, well, listen to my, my silly reviews, then you'll realize they're not new. All they're doing is they're just recycling rules. Okay, they're just going around in circles. So, um, so yeah, they've got the turn, they've got the breakdown. Now, you, you could liken these rules very much to modern rules. I mean, from this now, this goes into more of a, um, from a skirmish game. They used to call this Hero Hammer, okay? And I'll show you why in a minute. Okay, so basically, if you imagine Rogue Trader is a skirmish game, this is like your your warband game. So this is where you'd have like a, a couple of squads, more like a modern game, but not as big. Okay, it's not as not as large. Okay, so in this one they kept a line of sight, um, and your and your firing arcs. They've got the little diagrams there. So you kept firing arcs. Okay, so that's different from the from the modern stuff. They kept the firing arcs. Okay, they um. And, and, and with cover in this one, okay, instead of, instead of adding um, bonuses to saves, what you would have is cover would detract from the guy shooting. Okay, so if I was going to shoot somebody in cover, I would go and get a minus to my roll to hit, as opposed to him getting a bonus to his armor save, which kind of makes a bit more sense, right? Okay. Um, they've still got um, things like short and long ranges for weapons as they had in, in Rogue Trader. So they've so they used to have like short, medium and long, now they've just got short and long ranges. Okay, and they've got modifiers to hit at short and long ranges. Okay. So you can see how they're like trimming it down slightly. They're starting to trim things down and make it more streamlined, designed for larger games. So now because it's so streamlined, like you you imagine trying to play a huge game with all, with the, the Rogue Trader rules. It would just go tits because there's so much to do. There's there's so there's so many different little rules. It's great for a skirmish game, but as soon as you go above 10 miniatures, the, the whole thing just starts to fall apart and then it starts to get bogged down with rules. So now they're starting to streamline things, and it's reflected in the pictures, which I'll show you. They're starting to streamline things down so that it's, it's more useful for larger scale games. So, yeah, there's a lie. Okay, so so I said short and long range. They have, they've got short, sorry, a lie. No, it is just short, short and long range, and they've got modifiers for that. Um, so, like I said, they still have the arcs of fire on the bases. Um, the damage chart strength strength versus toughness okay that's that's exactly the same as it is sort of now um, oh and you've got save modifiers so like Warhammer Fantasy where you can get a guy with like a one plus save and people are like how does that work well because you get save modifiers in this one you get save modifiers so for example a melter gun will give you a minus four to save woohoo don't want to get hit with that bad boy do you okay um, now with this one, this is this is now again. This shouldn't be too long a review. Well, I hope it's not going to be because a, a, a lot of guys said that the, the first one was quite long. But you know, hey, I didn't want to not do the book justice by doing a short review and not covering everything. Same with this one, okay? But this is a shorter book. It is. And now you'll you'll notice in this one, if you start looking at the artwork, this is where they go from. This is like the the transition book. This is you know, second edition is like where where Warhammer Forty Thousand made the jump from skirmish game to to a large scale, I say large scale, it's not really, you know, like the size of a real war, is it? Let's be honest, it's, it's still more or less a, a skirmish, really, if you consider it in an in a overall battle sense, but a larger scale game, okay? This is like the transition book, and the whole feel of the game changes when you go from Rogue Trader to second to third. It goes from being fun and light-hearted, but still with some pretty cool stuff, to being now in second edition, you know, a bit more serious, Okay, we're getting a bit more serious now, a bit more like, yeah, Space Marines, Heroes, the, Heroes of the Imperium, and such getting a bit more serious to being full on, this is serious, the Grimdark and Third Ed. Okay, so this is why this, is, this book is so important, okay? Okay, so 
They've got your, your blast markers in here. They've got throwing grenades. Throwing hand grenades. Yep, this is this is the exact same rules as you've got in 6th edition. Haha, <laughs> funny that. Remember what I said about recycling rules? Yeah. Okay, and this is where they've got some really interesting stuff now. Okay, this is where they added some cool stuff. And you'll notice when Games Workshop went into the specialist games, so things like Necromunda, okay, games like that, they took a lot of rules from this. So things like They've got in here. They've got sustained fire, which is really cool. You can target the ground with your template weapons. You've got Overwatch. So instead of instead of using your miniature for a turn, you set them into Overwatch. So if somebody moves in front of him, you get to fire. Okay. Things like that. So so all that sort of stuff, you know, um, started in second edition essentially. Okay. And then you've got your your hand to hand now. In the latest edition of Warhammer 40,000, hand-to-hand isn't very good because you get your Overwatch firing, excuse me, you get your Overwatch firing and a lot of things are very shooty, alright, so hand-to-hand -hand isn't great. Now I remember before that hand-to-hand -hand was freaking awesome. The reason why is because if you think about it, in a turn, you're really fighting two turns of hand-to-hand -hand combat because every single turn you go through move, shoot, hand-to-hand, -hand, both sides fight. His turn, move, shoot, hand-to-hand, -hand, both sides fight. So really, hand-to-hand -hand is like a, a, a double whammy, if that makes sense, okay? So hand-to-hand -hand was nails. In this one, you even had you even had the um, the parry rule, okay, which was really cool. Again, this leads into the whole hero hammer thing, which we'll go through in a, in a, in a minute. Um, uh, here we go. Okay, cool. So they got all the examples of hand-to-hand -hand combat, more epic artwork. Um, I say epic until you turn to this page and you see, and you see that. I mean, really, come on. Yeah, okay. So it's it's not that serious yet. Okay. So this is where the, the Space Marines got their special rule. Um, and they sh shall know no fear. Well, this it's, it's called in this the Space Marine Shaken Rule. It's essentially the same thing as the modern one. Instead, um, you don't run away at all, except you're just not allowed to advance. So, like, so if you lose your morale check, you don't you don't run away. You're just not allowed to go towards enemy. You can still shoot and fight to hand-to-hand -hand combat if you're really in hand-to-hand -hand combat, but you can't move towards the enemy. Your class is shaken. Okay. So, ha, yes. Okay. So, the '90s was a colorful time. Okay, the era of a thousand colors. The era of painting your miniatures, 1,000 colors. <laughs> yes! Look, look at this! Look at this! Look! Look at that noise marine! Woohoohoohoo! Look, leopard skin! He's got leopard skin armor! And a freaking guitar! That! That is a noise marine! Oh, okay, and this is this is one of the reasons I like Eldar so much. is because if you look at the Eldar stuff, it's pretty much unchanged, really, since Rogue Trader. Okay, it's it's, it's like, you know, it's, it's one of the... One of the Untouched armies sounds dirty, I know, but it's one of the untouched armies of Warhammer 40,000. I mean, if you look at the if you look at the warlock figure, that little warlock figure, I mean, I believe you can still get him. I've got him. I got him the other day, um, actually, like a couple of weeks ago. Um, swooping hawks, look, look, they look, they look like freaking exactly the same. Okay, so, so this is where you, we, okay, so, so this is what I mean about. Um, about it's going away from your skirmish game and it's like a transition into your larger games and and it's even represented by the pictures so this this is the sort of scale of game you'd expect to play with with this rule set okay you know you've got here in the picture you've got depicted like a squad or two of marines yeah like here we go so you've got like your devastator equivalent squad you've got a dreadnought you've got a command squad and you've got a terminator squad and you know that that's the sort of you know like three or four squads kind of thing so, so you can see in the picture there yeah, so that's that's the sort of size of game that you're looking at with this rule set. So that's what they're going for. That's you know that, that that's where that's the direction it's taking. In. This is the transition book. And remember what I said is that this is the era when they sort of break everything down. So you got all these different rule books. Oh oh yeah, mega and Tyranids. Tyranids in in the current edition are pretty. I mean I think they look pretty cool. They they, they look pretty pretty nifty. They didn't look pretty nifty back back here. This is what's called a screamer killer. This is the screamer killer. 
It screams while it kills you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So there we go. Um, okay. So they've got they've got the, the standard psychology section here, um, where you've got the rules as they are now: terror, stupidity, frenzy, hatred. Okay, and you remember in the modern edition, it's, there's a lot of different special rules. So this is where they kind of start, okay? And this is where I go into the hero hammer side of things, okay? So you can see here, they've got your heroic characters, and they've got various stats, okay? And basically what you had was, so you, you've got your, like, your war band of a couple of squads, and you'd have a hero. And normally your hero would be really freaking powerful. I mean, your hero is like really really badass. I mean I know they're, they're pretty badass now but like this was when because you only, you only had a few squads you didn't have like a whole army for one hero to chew through this is like you know your heroes were powerful okay your heroes and your characters were powerful alright so and you'll notice in this one this is like and when I first started gaming because like I said I started in third okay um, there's freaking standards everywhere everybody's got a standard especially the Eldar the Eldar were like were freaking every man carried a standard. Every man, like, oh, okay. Oh, here we go. We've got, we've got Eldar versus Tyranids. <laughs> and look at the Dire Avengers. Look, look. Every man has a standard in the Dire Avengers. You will all carry a flag. Therefore, we will know where you are. And the Tyranids looked so bad. Okay, so there we go. Um, so they got psionics, they got vehicles. In this one, they um, because this is the starter box rule book that I'm going through here. In the starter box, they they include they they call this another sort of nickname for this was like the edition where they hated trees. They hated trees because they made so much stuff out of card. Like they had they had stat cards for like in here like land raiders and space marine squads. They had stat cards for so you didn't have to go through a rule book. And they even had the little, little paper stands for Dreadnought. So you have a little, a little freaking paper, paper Dreadnought. And they paper terrain. Everything was made out of paper. 10,000 trees per box. <laughs> so they got, they got a little illustration of your, of your little stack cards you'd get here. And on there they'd have just about everything, really, um, that, you, that you'd need. But still, they really went overboard on the, on the paper. Um, in, in this edition, man, well, yeah, they, they were really crazy. Okay, so th this is where again things get simplified. Remember in the last one you had sort of you had to move properly. This one is just like you you got all your standard types: tracked, wheeled, bikes and trikes, walkers, skimmers, boarding and leaving, and your vehicle ve bleh, vehicle can go out of control. You can ram, um, shooting shooting from vehicles, shooting at vehicles. They've got a, a huge arm penetration table here of um, what. Every single weapon's breakdown of what their armor pen is. They actually, they, they break every single weapon down of how good it is at going through armor. And they use different dice in this edition. Not just D6s, they use like, here we go, D20s, D12s. Um, 2D6, D12. Um, I think they've got D4s in here somewhere. The old um, Wargamers Keltrops. Don't stand on them, very painful. So yeah, so they've got a full armor penetration table here on every single weapon that you go through has got, got its own armor penetration value. Um, again, uh, is it simplified from the last edition? That's not really. Hand-to-hand -hand combat, again, lethal. Because now you're getting, not only are you getting minuses to your, your, um, your armor saves, okay, it's not just things go through your armor or they don't, you're getting minuses to your armor saves, which is actually even worse. Um, and remember that hand to hand you fight really twice in a turn, that's what makes it so lethal. And in the old editions, running up to sixth, hand to hand was always pretty decisive. And then you throw in your really powerful heroes, and you just, yeah, you're mincing squads in hand to hand combat. Hero Hammer, okay? Um, dreadnoughts, War Walkers, <clears throat> Skimmers, Buildings. Okay, this is quite interesting with this edition because you can naturally move inside and outside of building, move into and around buildings, shooting from buildings. You can shoot at buildings, so you can, you can actually destroy a building to get to somebody. Um, yeah, here we go. So, ha, a tent or inflatable structure has an armor value of 5. 
And I believe this works very, very similarly to the way that, that um, vehicle armor does. So you get like your armor penetration and you, and you, you wear it down and you can, you can actually destroy the building. So you've got a little table here that tells you um, exactly what different kinds of buildings and how strong different kinds of buildings are. Um, doors, rules to get through doors. Um, yeah, and that's actually... Oh, and this is, this is, here we go, so they, right at the end they've got a weapon summary, you know, like your weapon chart you get at the end of your standard rule books. And this is something they added which is very useful, which they, you know, like, like I mentioned the Warhammer 40,000, the freaking, the, the, the quick reference sheet was like 10 pages long. In this one they've actually broken it down to, it's, it's the back cover of the book. So, here we go, so you've got your breakdown of stuff there, and then if you turn the page, so it's the back cover of the book, You've got the rear of it, and you break down your turn sequence and all that. So your rear cover of your book was actually your little quick reference thing. So that is a very quick rundown of the Warhammer 40,000 second edition rulebook. And you can see the difference between the two, okay? Your Rogue Trader and your, your Warhammer 40,000, okay? So they, they're making the jump now. So everything in one rulebook, complicated rules, skirmish rules, to everything broken down into various rulebooks, more streamlined, building up to large scale games. So now you've got, you know, really company level, so three or four or five squads designed to fight in a game. Okay, so this is where the transition's happening. So now they, they start to bring in all these modern, more modern rules. So you've got Overwatch Fire, you simplified the stack line, everything's simplified. You've got a, a much more simple quick reference sheet. So it's a lot easier to get into this than it is to get into this. Okay, if I was gonna pick a favorite, in terms of value for money, oh, geez, what rogue trader every time because you get everything in one book everything is in there that you need you, you don't it's like it's like a role-playing book that's exactly what it's like you don't need to buy any more stuff whereas this now you're getting to the more modern side oh you want to buy space marines do you well guess what you don't just buy a box you've got to buy an army box and then you've got to buy the codex and then you've got to buy blah 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 so this is where you start to get into the business model bearing in mind this was released in 93 and when did games workshop become a public company I'll let you research that, okay? And you can you can, you can find the connection, you can find the link between this and when Games Workshop became a public company. That said, when they first became a public company, most of the stocks and shares were held by the by the actual people in the company themselves, like the designers and stuff like that, over 50%. However, this was released in 93. So start to think about that, and I'll let you research that yourself. So, hope you enjoyed the quick review of Warhammer 40,000 Second Edition the next one will be a bit more in-depth because we're going into 3rd edition and that is the start of the modern era of Warhammer 40,000. I'll see you then. Take care.